YouTube, Uncle Lucky here, and welcome back to another episode of Comic Book Quiz and Art. Today, we're going off the cuff. Um, as you know, if you've watched any of the other off the cuff episodes, uh, I don't go into an in depth review. I just pick up a couple of key issues and I touch upon them a little bit, give my first impressions of the comic books. Usually, it's usually in the number one series, but some of them carry on into longer running story arcs or whatever, just things I've, I've picked up lately. So let's get this party started with um, Harley Quinn. Harley's little black book, as you can see here. So, quick little story on the Harley Quinn here. My wife, had, she's not a comic book collector per se. She has more just within the last year gotten into it because I'm a pretty much a lifelong comic book collector and you know I tried to get her into it I got her really into Wonder Woman and now she's kind of on the hunt she's trying to find her own way and I'm just kinda of like go get it go after it find what you want to read you know whatever and she kinda of gravitated towards Harley Quinn you know it's it's understandable you're gonna look for female characters stuff that inspires you things like that whatever it's cool because um, I wouldn't have expected her to run out and buy Superman for her first couple of comic books. So, she picked up on Harley Quinn. Now, here's my thing. Harley Quinn... Harley Quinn was a cartoon character in the 90s, in the Batman television series, the animated series. Um, much past that, I never really read any Harley Quinn comic books. Kind of wish I had picked up the original Harley Quinn comic books because now I could buy a, a BMW with the, the sale I could make off the first couple of them, but never really read a lot of Harley Quinn comic books. So, she sees Harley Quinn, wants to try it out, see if she likes it. I see Harley Quinn's uh, little black book number two, and it's got... Green Lantern on the cover. So, I automatically want to see what's going on in this issue. Now, I'm going to have a question for all of you. This is a legitimate question. It's not a rhetorical or, or just me throwing things out loud. It's a legitimate question for any of you who do read Harley Quinn or have read a lot of it in the past, whatever. This is a legitimate question. I'll get to it in a second. So, number two here. Um, story by Connor and art by Palmati. <laughs> I, I couldn't pronounce that if you put a gun to my head. P-A-L-M-I-O-T-T-I. -T -T -I. Wow. Um, it looks good. Actually, it does. Uh, the art is pretty stellar. I, I gotta admit. This guy is a guy or girl. Not sure who it is. Pretty good artist. I've honestly never heard of him, but um, good artist, yeah. Really good artist. Um, the story is... It's funny. It's supposed to be because Harley Quinn is more of a lighter character. Not every comic book has to be some deep, dark, disturbing something. It's, it's funny. It's actually... There was a couple of pages that made me legitimately laugh very loud. Especially a, a certain cameo. If you're reading this series, I'm not going to give it away. There's a cameo in here, and it just had me in stitches. But here's my question that I'm getting to. Um, not having read Harley Quinn a lot, you notice that she, in, the, in this entire issue, is in black and red. Whether she's in this form that she takes in the comic book, or just her regular costume, it's black and red. She narrates the comic book through a journal that she keeps, her little black book. It's basically her talking to us, the reader. And there's a reference in here where she is giving a Green Lantern a smoochy smooch, and she grabs his butt, and he makes a comment about her grabbing his butt, and she says, well, I saw it on the front cover of a comic book this comic book where she's clearly grabbing his ass. So, the question I have here, because I don't read Harley, is... Is she DC's version or answer to Deadpool? Because in this book, she breaks the fourth wall. She's in red and black. Um, she's talking to the reader nonstop. Uh, just... 
it seems very Deadpool to me, and I don't, I don't know where that's come from. Um, anybody else draw this correlation, or am I just off here? Tell me. Let me know. Uh, comments below. Is she the DC version of Deadpool? Minus that, it, it's, a, it's a decent comic book. I don't think I would collect it, but it, it's okay. Yeah, this next one's... Um... <laughs> wow. Well, it, I, I, I've been searching for the words for this, this comic book for uh, 15, 20 minutes now before I started filming. Um, Batman, number 49... Um, somebody else, uh, I can't remember, I think it was Reader1717 or somebody, uh, I hadn't read the issue, I was trying to figure out what was going on in their video because they, they didn't really open it up or anything. Uh, I, I see now where the, where it was, was going on that, um, somebody dropped a metric ton of acid when they did this comic book. I am not kidding you. There must have been so much smoke and toke in the room where this person was hanging out. An artist and a writer were just doing lines. Something. It's insane. This comic book... <laughs> I don't even know where to start how off the wall... This is an acid trip, Alice in Wonderland, some kind of... Guys, I don't have the words. I really don't. Um... I've read it twice now, and I'm still looking for the words of how off the wall this entire comic book is. Uh, the art's decent. Uh, it's not Capullo, by any means. Um, I mean, just look at this weird whatever is going on here. It's this, it starts off, you know, semi-normal, sort of. Uh, there's just some, you know, references to Corvals and a couple of, I guess, flashbacks. But then it just gets so insanely weird. <laughs> I really don't have much else for it. It's just so off the wall. It's insane how weird this issue is. It's all over the place. I don't know what to do about this comic book anymore, to tell you the truth. I tried to get on board because uh, of Capullo, and they've gotten, you know, it seems like Babbitt's going to the wayside, hopefully pretty soon, and the whole story arc with, with Bloom is, I guess, I don't know, even from this book, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. So, tell me. You got, bring it. Tell me in the description below, man. I, I have no idea. I'm completely lost on this one. Now here we go. This one was a surprise. Um, I'm going to be... There's one of two ways you can look at this comic book right now. It's either fanfare, where there's a TV show out right now on Netflix that everybody can watch, that it's probably definitely going to boost the sales to this if, if people have been watching... Uh, the Netflix series, or you can look at it as a love letter to two characters that have been around for a very long time, and they were fan favorites for a while. Um, I think both of them kind of fell by the wayside for quite a while. I haven't been reading Marvel for a long time, honestly. I, if it's not Doctor Strange, then, you know, I haven't been picking anything else up. But Power Man and Iron Fist, number one. And I specifically got this cover because I just love the, you know, I'm a toy collector too, you know, action figures and all that. And it's got a cool looking Iron Fist collectible toy cover. It did the same thing with uh, Doctor Strange. I'll tell you what, if this is something that is leading from the Netflix series, I'm pretty sure Disney and Marvel Corps know that these series are hitting it pretty big right now on Netflix. You know, the Jessica Jones show was pretty good. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. And it's got a lot of reference to her in here and, you know, the family thing. The the writing is really good. Um, it's 
it's it's a good story and it's very funny it's it's very kind of in a way upbeat you know it's got the bad guys and, and the action that it needs but it doesn't go for this punch to your face right off the bat these guys are kicking ass and taking names it's like it doesn't do that it it's it's different but I think I like it I really do um, the arts pretty good let's see here um, the art let me see David Walker is the writer and Sanford Green is the artist and I kinda like this uh, the style they've Definitely got a, a interesting style here. Um, you know, Luke's not, uh, he doesn't look typical of the comic book guys lately, and that's a good thing. You know, he, he looks like he's aged a little bit. You know, it's, they're getting the, they keep making the reference or the joke that they're getting the band back together. And, you know, they have, the thing I kind of enjoy in in this comic book is that they're telling you, you know, each time they introduce a character, they give you just a tiny little backstory just to catch you up, and it shows them back in the day, and, you know, this is them now, they're older and, you know, supposedly wiser, but it's a good, it's a good read, it really is. It really surprised me. I picked it up on a whim, um, and I was very pleased with it. I think I could actually collect this series if they keep up this type of writing. The writing's funny. The quips between the two of them uh, is pretty damn good. And it's got, you know, Jessica in the background. She's not really doing anything much in this, but the, the hilarity ensues where, you know, he's now a family man. And he's watching what he does and what he says because he's a family man. And the Iron Fist is just crazy off the wall character. He's just he's just funny to me. So it's really good. This is one I would actually recommend for anybody who's you know looking for a, a number one right now. It's something a little bit different. I like I said, um, not having been in Marvel for a very long time. I don't know if these guys have just disappeared for a while or what. I've got maybe three Iron Fist comic books in my entire collection and Luke Cage maybe two at the most. I just never, I never read those guys. I never read their stories a lot. I, I know about them. I've done a lot of research and all that stuff trying to stay privy to everything that's going on, especially now that you got Jessica Jones' TV show and Daredevil and now they're going to do all four of them together for the Defenders, you know. So, it's, again, if it's fan service just feeding off of a television show, that's one thing. But if they're actually legitimately doing this, you know, for a good old back-to-the-basics type of thing, you know, this would be a good start. Uh, they're going to get the band back together. And that's going to do it for this episode of Off the Cuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below, like I said, uh, what you think about the comic books I showed you today. Um, got couple more, you know, I'm still pulling out some long boxes. I'm still going to continue with A to Z. I don't know if I'm finished with A yet because I got a lot of boxes I got to pull out. Seriously, it's it's a mess in here. So I might be moving into B, but I don't know yet. So that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.